they got to cut it off at a certain point, right? <laughs> That's why people would rather hear the music than me. This is great. <laughs> All right, how's everybody doing today? <laughs> awesome. It's, uh, it's probably better that we have these panels uh, after the morning, don't you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a little hard to get up uh, on certain mornings. Not so bad today. All right, so hey, welcome to the uh, 2014 EverQuest keynote panel here at SOE Live in Las Vegas. So, all right. Now, one thing I did want to kind of pay tribute to is all of you. And uh, I, I touched base on it last night. And uh, during the signups for uh, SOE Live, uh, we get to see a little bit of uh, stats on who's showing up from uh, their primary game. And uh, it was kind of exciting um, to know and keep watching how we kept pulling away from the other games. So thank you all for showing up. This is awesome. And um, uh, we have our dev team here. Uh, they're sitting over in this area. We're going to bring them up later. Uh, we have some uh, cool things to show you that uh, we've been working on, things that we will be working on, and things we will be delivering uh, very soon here for this year. So very excited. Uh, so today, and actually for the next three days, uh, we're here to talk to you about all those great things that we have for EverQuest. And um, this panel, what we want to do is get into those things that we just uh, had launched recently, or just completed recently, and uh, what's in store. We'll transition into that future stuff. So let's say we get this thing rolling. Now EverQuest, back then, was just this one game. I don't think anybody realized 20 years, almost 20 years ago, that it would grow into this tremendous franchise that it has today. Uh, can you guys believe that there have been 11 EverQuest games developed over the years? 11. And it started with this game right here. And it's, this game keeps growing. And it's because of the passion of, of these guys that work on the game and you that keep breathing life into the game. So thank you very much. See, that's a personal connection we're making. All right. All right, so 2014 marked the year of EverQuest. Are you guys still thinking about those 11 games? Like which ones they are? You got it? It's not all of our expansions. It's different games. We can go over it later. Um, so this marked the year of EverQuest and for big reasons. And one is that it marked the 15th anniversary for your game, the original EverQuest. Let's start it right here. Now, every year, the anniversary has become a special time frame for us that we get to create some cool content. And we like to make it really special. And one of those things that, uh, uh, that, that is special about it was a panel that we just had. The, the, uh, player design missions. You guys are helping build content that we put in the game uh, later in the year. So that's pretty cool. Now, another cool thing besides the content that we put in uh, from February through April this past year, we had this awesome, beautiful art piece created uh, commemorating some of the classic locations throughout Norath, kind of bringing that nostalgic feeling of all those discoveries into one shot that you've had when you played the game. So. And I believe everybody got a copy of that here attending SOE Live, correct? Yeah. All right. If you didn't, go back and ask to check your bags and get it replaced. Now, you can take that piece, frame it. It's beautiful. Um, or what you can do is bring it to the uh, Year of EverQuest meet and greet on Saturday afternoon where you can get autographs from the team, uh, past and present developers. Uh, so, you know, we hope to see you there. I think it's from 3 to 5 on Saturday, so check your schedules to double check. Check to double check. All right, now what I want to do is give you a quick look 
at everything that we did in EverQuest since last SWE Live. It was a fun look at everything we did. Not, well, not everything, because as you can tell, we couldn't fit it all on the screen. Uh, but here's a more serious look at some of the high, thi uh, high level things that we did this last year. All right, that brings us up to what are we doing now and what's coming to you very, very soon. And one of the things that I touched base on last night was Player Studio. Uh, you know that players can create items, put them in the game, and make money when they sell in the marketplace. Now, we have had three major categories, uh, weapons, shields, uh, a wide variety of housing items or items for your guild halls. Next week, we'll have a new category, and that will be player robes. Uh, now, my good friend Kevin Lighty has been working, our lead artist, uh, has been working on getting robes uh, in a position where we'll have a sample texture template that you can download, a robe set, robe set, one set, and uh, you can customize it to your liking. Uh, and I don't know why I keep thinking this, but I would think that this would be a great opportunity for guilds to distinguish themselves by having a robe that looks different than anybody else. There are a lot of great artists out there. There are a lot of great artists that you can find and hopefully a lot of great artists that can be created with the opportunity to distinguish yourselves uh, from other guilds possibly from other officers, recruits in your guild. I know you all have meetings, you have parties, so this might be one thing you can do. So let's take a look what this might look like. Now, here's a sample robe that you'll be able to take and customize it maybe to something like this. Or something like this. Or even better, something like that. Now, robes will be launching next week, and I was told that the date that they will be live for you to start customizing them is on Monday, on the 18th. So, I hope you check it out, stay tuned. And uh, probably a good, we won't get back until Tuesday, so if there are any issues, we won't know about it until then. So, <laughs> it should be all streamlined. I've been giving the thumbs up, so I hope you guys have a good time with that. Now, also, loot. I touched base on loot last night. And I think I asked a reverse question. Now, who likes loot? Yeah, all right. Well, this system's gonna work for you because I'll get into the details. But have you ever had a problem with loot? Looting? 
Have you ever had a problem? You know, has it been tedious sometimes or time consuming? Ever had a problem looting a corpse? All right. Well, we want to give you some simple tools with this new advanced looting feature where all those headaches will go away. Most of them, 99% sure all of them will go away. And you can focus on the fun of the game because that's what we want you to do, not manage your inventory, but have fun. And here's how we're going to do it. We have, we're building an adaptive system where it will learn from you on what you want. So you can teach the system to always loot the items that you always want or never show you again the items you never want to see again. Pretty awesome, huh? All right. Now, after you have been playing with the system for a short period of time on those items you've selected, what you do want and don't want, it will automatically loot those items that you want and put them into your inventory. Now, it is going to be a hybrid system between random rolling and master looter. And it will also work in solo, group, and raid play. Sound good so far? Have any questions? Save it. We're going to have a Q&A session after this, so you can ask all the questions you want. So this is coming later in the year, probably late fall. All right. What else? Well, the lady on the right there is kind of kind of showing you a glimpse of the Darkened Sea. Now we mentioned the Darkened Sea is going to be our 21st expansion in our short 16 year history. And that is coming very soon to you, us, everybody. The Darkened Sea, here's the full portrait. And we are excited to bring back the storylines for some great characters in our game's history, Firiona V, Lannis Deville, the classic struggle between good and evil. So we're bringing that back that you guys will experience very soon. I mean, we've got to pay tribute. We've got to pay tribute to Firiona. She's almost on every box. And uh, we're excited to bring her back. So I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to talk about the high-level features of the expansion before I hand it off to a few more people to go into more detail. The Darkened Sea is paying tribute to a previous, a previous expansion, The Buried Sea, where we're going to revisit some familiar storylines, characters, and adventure areas that we tie into. We will have all eight zones available on launch day. I guess we could talk about that a little bit if you want to. Hey, we're listening. We're listening. We know you want it all now. That's what you've told us. So we're giving you all eight zones at launch day. You will have a lot of quests, missions, raids, items, spells, AAs. You will also have a level increase this year. From 100 to 105. And uh, we have hopefully you will feel the same way a great space saving feature with the mount key ring yeah all right guys we did our jobs well we did our jobs well all right so we brought some great features we've been listening to you we have a game that has this rich history and it's only because of what you guys keep pouring into it, what we keep pouring into it. And I, you know, we've, we've learned some valuable lessons of giving you what you want, and that's what we're trying to do, is make the game fun for you to play and not manage the game. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, introduce now Akeel Hooper, our creative director, and Jonathan Carricker, lead designer, to kind of give you a brief look at the, uh, the zones and talk about the lore of the expansion. Hey everyone. So in a darkened sea, you'll be traveling back to the, what is it, buried sea, 
Tanair is there, and she's there to, hear, to heal the emperor of uh, Catacastrum. While she's healing the emperor, Lannis shows up with a splinter faction of the Combine, kidnaps the emperor. So it'd be up to all of you to find the emperor, rescue him, and foil Lannis' plans. Now let's take a look at some of the zones that we'll be doing in the, shadow, in the Darkened Sea. <laughs> One of those seas. So your, uh, your first stop in the Darkened Sea is going to be this zone called Tempest Temple. Um, now a group of Karana worshipping Kedj are here in Tempest Temple, and in order to change the environment to better suit them, and in order to impress their god Karana, they're trying to create the perfect storm. Now, unfortunately for Tempest Temple, this has just ruined the ecology. They've lifted out the um, coral forest out of the sea. Um, they've shattered the dormant volcano in the middle of the zone and sent stone and seawater spraying into the sky where it's suspended by magic. And uh, this, this zone, which used to be this docile jungle island, is now the epicenter of this raging, chaotic, magical storm. So there are a few uh, major distinctive visual features in the zone. You see the lava flow right here that was kicked up by the volcano that Jonathan mentioned. You also have those massing stones that were, kept, that were kicked up from the Kedge's magic. So we really wanted to, to portray this island paradise that was disrupted by this magic that was set off by the Kedge. And next we have the Caverns of Endless Song. So this is next to Tempest Temple. Underneath the Coral Forest adjacent to Tempest Temple, we have this series of caverns. A siren named Cilicia makes her home here, and she's jilted and jealous and she steals the songs of other sirens and then sings them in the hope of luring back the love of the adventure she lost. While Caverns of Endless Song is a, sub, is a submarine cavern system, you can see that the entire cavern system isn't underwater. You'll do some swimming back and forth between passages, but a lot of the fighting you'll be doing will be in open air. We really wanted to have this, yeah, I hate <laughs> underwater combat. <laughs> <laughs> we really wanted that to express with these uh, bright corals. Here's a piece of the concept art. This was kind of our jumping off point. But we really wanted to, to capture a lot of the rich vibrancy that you get from underwater sea life. Thanks, Akil. Thank and uh, this is Degmar, the Lost Castle. So the Combine, in their attempts to preserve the various races of Norath, whether or not those races wanted to be helped and preserved, have translocated this castle full of dwarves to the bottom of the ocean in order to protect them. Um, unfortunately, this, this did not go well for the dwarves. Uh, and since that time, they've, they've gone insane, trapped down here. Um, so it'll be up to you uh, when you're in Degmar to find out what happened to these guys and what their story is. Yeah. Crazy dwarves, not unusual. <laughs> so, uh, so with Degmar, as Jonathan mentioned, the entire castle is translocated to the bottom of the sea. And it's got this magical barrier around it that keeps the pressure of the sea waters and all the sea life at bay. Um, the, the dome really protects it, so you're still going to see all of these intricate stonework and all of these beautiful designs and all of, the, all, all of the areas around the castle. And this is a good one. This is Thuliasaur Island. So um, off in the ocean here, out near Buried Sea, there's a lost, isolated uh, tropical jungle full of prehistoric creatures, giant dinosaurs, um, a lost tribe of lizard men. And as you saw, this was the original home of the Drogmore. So, um, but aside from the occasional pirate ship that comes by and picks up Drogmore and, and then sells them in Gunthagus mounts, like they don't have much contact with the outside world. Uh, so even the lizard men here who built this temple to Kazakh Thule have forgotten who their god is. Thuliosaur, with Thuliosaur we are going for a land of the lost style zone. Uh, massive flora and fauna, again, lots of light, uh, bright, vibrant colors. Uh, most of the zone is, is ruins. There's not a whole lot of developed architecture here, aside from the temple uh, to Kazakh Thule. Again, here's a piece of concept art that shows you where we were starting with, with the um, general look and feel for the zone, but it's awesome. You'll love it. And dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs yeah, are yeah. awesome. <laughs> Um, and the next, your, your travels will take you to the Combine Dredge. So this is a series of magical uh, mining platforms connected by uh, mana conduits that the Combine built. And its purpose was to harvest resources from the bottom of the ocean for the Combine. Um, but Lannis has shown up here with her forces and has co-opted this and taken it. And uh, she's using it not to mine resources, but for a much more nefarious purpose. The Combine Dredge is the first of two zones that we're using to show the might that the Combine have over magic and how they use magic to bend their will. 
So these, these islands were all raised from the ocean using magic and, uh, and the combine use it to harvest resources and to, uh, and to manage the domes uh, that they have underwater. Thanks. And, and last but not least, we have Arx Mentis. Um, your, your search for the emperor is going to lead you here. Now this this is the, uh, represents the pinnacle of combine technology and magic. This is a floating fortress in the sky um, filled with combine and, then, and their creatures and their, their cohorts. So uh, you're going to go here and find that Lannis and the splinter group of the combine have decided they have a, a common goal and they've joined forces to thwart the plans of Feriona Bai. So as Jonathan mentioned, we really wanted to express here this combination, this merging of magic and technology that the Combine had been using. But we wanted to make sure that the, that the area still had a very Narathian feel for, for it. So it's kind of a delicate balance, uh, pushing the magic to, to the edge as far as we could go, but we did fun <laughs> stuff like that, the brooms yes. beat themselves. Here's a piece of concept art, which was kind of our jumping off point. So this was way too technological for where we were going, but it kind of shows you where we started and how we ended up where we are. Next, Akil. So we uh, just wanted to give you a brief look at the lore and a brief look at the, the zones. Um, next, I'd like to invite up Doug Cronkite to the stage, our assistant lead designer in charge of systems. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as Tom mentioned, one of the new features for the Dark and Sea is our new mount key ring. Now, over the years, player inventory space has become really valuable and at the same time it's become really cluttered you know if you're like me you keep bags full of items just in case you need them but in reality you don't use them very often so we created the mount key ring instead of keeping your mounts in your bags you'll now be adding them to a single location a new tab on the inventory window it saves you valuable bag space and allows you to manage them from a single location Maybe. There we go. But it gets better than that. Let's say you have a mount that you have some stats on it. You kind of like the buff you get from it. But you really like the visual look of a different mount. Well, now you don't need to choose between good stats and good looks. Simply choose the mount you want to have the buff from, combine it with the mount you want the visual from, and you get the best of both worlds in one. My, my personal favorite is the corrupted Soka car. He's black and mean looking and just kind of cool. So moving on to the darkened sea. As you've already learned, this raises the level cap to 105. That's going to have new trade skills, including new cultural armor, new items, new AAs, and new spells. But over the years, we've noticed that the power increase between spellcasters and melee has a significant time disparity. Spellcasters are traditionally very front-loaded. You go to a vendor in the expansion, you buy your rank one spells, and you're given a pretty significant piece of your power. Whereas melee classes have to wait until they get new items and new weapons from rare NPCs, missions, or raids. So we've decided to make a small change to the way power is given out. Spellcasters will now be buying spell focus lines, basically, that will enhance specific spells or spell lines via AA points earned from experiencing out in, adventuring out in Norath. Now, to be clear, we're not making all of your power come from this. It's just a small piece of it. But we believe that the best experiences you get in the game are those actually playing the game out in the world. And finally, with the release of the Darkened Sea, those of you who are all Access members will be able to auto-grant AAs from the House of Thule expansion, should you choose to do so. We have a lot of stuff to talk about this weekend. We look forward to seeing you. I'm sure you have a lot of questions to ask us. We look forward to seeing you at the panels on Saturday and Sunday for Q&A. And with that, I'm going to throw it back to Tom Tarazas, who's got some more details for you on the Dark and Sea. Thanks. Ah, uh, I'm excited. How about you guys? Woo! Awesome stuff. Great job, guys. Thank you for presenting. Awesome job. All right, so um, I said it's coming soon. 
It is. It's coming real quick, right around the corner. We expect beta to happen probably, you know, probably after the first of September. Uh, we should have beta signups very, very soon. So please pay attention to that. You guys are here, so I know you're listening to us. So get ready for that. Now, what I want to talk to you about is we're going to have a launch for our All Access members on October 28th. All right, it's coming quick, right? You're like, why aren't we playing it now? Uh, all right, we're going to have our free-to-play launch on November 11th. So a nice, nice uh, exclusive access for uh, your all-access membership. You can get in on day one, buying the expansion, and uh, start playing. All right, so now that brings us to the end of our presentation. You may have some questions, and as always, we have a microphone right there. Uh, we're going to have somebody manning the mic, and uh, we want to take uh, questions about the expansion. We have Q&A panels for everything else for EverQuest later uh, this weekend, but we want to have Q&A for the expansion or anything that you have seen up here. Uh, we'll start right, right at that uh, microphone. Rai, did you want to man it? Oh, Rai has a question. <laughs> All right, now what I'd like to do is uh, have a development team please stand up to, uh, hey, give them a round of applause. They're doing a great job. You've already met with them, uh, quite a few of them already this weekend. And if you see one of us, hey, feel free to come up and say hello. You know, we love you guys. This is an awesome venue for us to hang out with you. Uh, we see the, you know, the same familiar faces, so please come up, talk to us about EverQuest and all the great stories that we've been telling together over these years. So uh, we're going to go ahead and ca have the team come on up. Uh, we'll do some introductions, and um, I think that's it. We're doing Q&A now. Check, check. I've been liked before. The no, no. All right, here we go with introductions. Why don't we go ahead and start here in the end? Make sure you guys don't slide backwards because uh, it's a nice fall. It's a long drop. Hi, folks. I'm Kevin Lighty, the art lead. Hi, everybody. I'm Joe Vincent. I'm the uh, character artist. Thanks. I'm Jonathan Carricker. I'm Prathen. I'm uh, Doug Cronkite. I'm Ellie Droth. Kevin McPherson, programmer. Uh, Ed Harden, Aristo. Jin Chan, technical director. Jason Leo, Chandrock. Adam Schmidt, programmer. Questions, please. Yeah, my name's uh, Friedra. Uh, easy question. The mount keyring, is there a limit how many can be on the keyring, or is it? There, there is a limit of like 128 mounts. Oh, so it's no way we're going to get there. Yeah. Just make it sure. Yeah, I don't know if there's anybody out there that has that many, but if you do, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hello. Some of you may recognize me from years past. Absolutely. I've had some issues in the past getting the SOE Live granted, the expansion granted to my account. Are you guys going to actually have that down straight up this year? In time for launch. Uh, we are taking measures uh, to make the entire SOE Live process uh, smoother, and that is the reason why we gave you key cards this year uh, with those uh, codes for your items. And our expansion grant uh, team, uh, I don't know if they're actually here today, uh, they have been working on smoothing that process as well, and hopefully with any luck, uh, you should have it right when you need it. <laughs> okay, because two years ago it took six months. Next question. 
Hi, I'm Elvisa from Aralisi Mar, and you mentioned new trade skills. I wondered if there would be a new trade skill augment similar to the Brels Aug. Yeah, this, this was one of our stretch goals for the expansion. I think it depends on, on how uh, stretched we are in, in getting the expansion done and getting all the other trade skill stuff done. But, but it is on the schedule, and we hope to get it in for, for launch. Thank you. Mount Keyring question coming up. Yep. Flight with NCG. Um, I was wondering how the Mount Keyring is going to work with the heirlooms, if that would translate so that every person, every tune on that account would be able to put those on the key ring? So what we didn't mention is mounts will have a sort of a collectible status to them. And so when you put it into your mount key ring, uh, it will automatically flag that particular character as having collected. You'll then be able to take it out and keep on using it and, and trading around to all of your characters just like you would norm, uh, today with the heirloom status. So that will remain. Yeah, one caveat to that, though, if you're a knight, you, you can't take your mounts out of the key ring because you can't be giving out your holy steed and all that to other people. Uh, will there be any new Heroes Forge uh, sets, armor sets? Give it to Kevin. Let him talk. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Care to expand on the details of those sets? Yeah, come to, the, uh, come to the art panel tomorrow and you'll see them all. Uh, we have a, a tribal set. We have a combine set. And a, the Fire Elf set's already out, right? No. One more week. I meant it's already out on test. <laughs> With the additional trade skill items, are we actually raising the skill caps on the trade skills? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't believe we are. Um, unfortunately, the person who is the trade skill developer right, uh, is actually back at SOE still working hard. Um, so I don't have that information right now, but I, I definitely will get with him when I get back, um, and we can post something up on the forums about that to let you know. OK. Um, OK? Yeah, our mics are hot. So. Um, two years ago at SOE Live, you guys mentioned the possibility of uh, allowing players to possibly work on new player race models with Player Studio. Is that anywhere near, nearer to uh, implementation? Or we're going to start with the robes first, and probably you know see how things go with the Heroes Forge in terms of the character models. It's a really, really, really complex process. Um, maybe they're, you know, I'm sure with time everybody could get good at it, but um, there's still a lot more research that needs to be done to see if that's really feasible. We think that's an awesome idea, but it's just a matter of <laughs> feasibility. He said you don't know, but <laughs> <laughs> any details on what's going to happen, what's going to come with the collector's edition yet? I didn't catch that. No, what's coming with the collector's edition? Collector's edition? Items in the collector's ah, edition? I'll pass this to Jason. Jason Leo. Like housing or what? Jason Leo doesn't come in the collector's edition, just to be clear. <laughs> no, no, I don't come in the collector's edition. Now, there are items in the collector's edition. Uh, we haven't announced exactly what they are yet. Okay. They're still a work in progress, but we will have an announcement for those pretty soon. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Great answer, Jason, because, <laughs> you know, a lot of things that we deal with, uh, we're kind of held back on uh, announcing them until we've had the full pass of approvals from our uh, marketing team, our PR team, all of our business uh, leaders for EverQuest. So, uh, good answer, bud. Okay. Uh, Meltz from the NTG. I was kind of curious, we were talking about the looting assistant kind of. Uh, how is that going to work with like in raid instances, like having the raid leader being able to control it? And then what are you going to do with like your no drop loot and stuff like that? I'm curious for more explanation on how that might work. It's a rather complex system. Uh, it originally started as a seven page document. Um, 
It's now up to 14 pages, I believe, but in a nutshell, uh, you'll be able to assign a master looter uh, in your raid, and uh, there'll be algorithms that basically determine who, can, who has the rights to give loot, who has the rights to assign loot, and who uh, can roll, automatically roll for loot. Okay, thank you, because I've been leading raids for nine or eight years, eight, nine years. Yeah, I've been leading late raids for like eight or nine years, and that's always a huge headache having to deal with it. Thank you. We're, we're, we're pretty sure you're going to like this. It should be good. Right, uh, since this is a tribute to the Buried Sea a bit, will there be ship-to-ship -ship combat? <laughs> I believe that the answer is yes, right? If you're on a ship no and there's something there, you can fight, and then you go to another ship and there's something there, you can fight there, right? Actually, actually, the volcano in Tempest Keep destroyed all ships in Noras, so no, it's, it's not. No. Okay. Um, with the artists here, I'm just curious with Player Studio, if you're looking into uh, opening it up so players can design either housing exteriors, housing interiors, guild halls, that sort of thing. We talked about housing quite a bit and, and did a little research with one of our, our contributors. So that's, it's still kind of in the mix. Um, again, it, it's kind of like the, the player created characters. It's a really, really complex system. So feasibility is kind of still needs to be worked out, but it's still in the mix. Just curious with the, the main zone, what will be the zone connecting to it as far as existing zone and then wizard and druid ports into the expansion? Um, currently, we're planning on the connection coming from the Buried Sea to Tempest Temple, and that being the hub zone that connects everything else. And there will almost be guaranteed to be ports that take you there, but I'll, I can pass that to Ed for confirmation. I'm just going to say yes. He says yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Since all SW Live attendees get the expansion, is there going to be a more streamlined way to upgrade to the Collector's Edition? I hope so. We'll work that out. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll speak to um, we'll more details later. Yeah, we'll, we'll speak to our, uh, our production and platform teams to make sure that we hammer that out well. And usually, it's um, you know by having an item that that you can buy from the marketplace or that directs you, knowing what you already have on your account. You said there was going to be eight zones at launch. Is uh, that going to be all tier one? Is it going to be tier one and tier two? Is there going to be later zones coming out? Or how's that going to work? There are eight zones. That's it. Okay. <laughs> right on. No, 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 no. I don't mean, I don't mean to say there, there aren't any more zones coming, coming for the darkened sea. There are going to be all tiers across those eight zones, though. Okay. Great. I'm Camadurn from Resolution on Arola Sumar. The biggest question coming out of our entire guild, 68 to 70 percent, was will it all come out at once? And they all have asked me to tell you, thank you for listening. We try. Hello, I'm Spine Twist from Box. I just have a quick question. Are there any plans for a new progression server? We talk about it a lot, um, but just so we don't diverge, uh, we really wanted to keep things on the, on the expansion specific on this, in this Q&A, but it was something we talk about it a lot. We don't have any plans for it immediately or nothing we can really reveal right now, but it is, it's, it's talked about on a <laughs> regular basis. All right, thanks. Yeah. Hey, I'm Romance from Zegany. I was wondering if there was any uh, future plans for Epic 3.0s. <laughs> Probably no Epic 3.0 plans in the near future. Actually, let me just rephrase that. No. <laughs> You've talked about the issues with items, storage and whatnot. One great opportunity, Guildhall, has really big closet that you can only put placeable items in. Is this about the expansion? I think so. I, hope so. <laughs> I, I think it's a wish for the expansion, yes. right? We'll call it that. Um, why, don't you, why don't you bring that to the Q&A panel that yeah. we have this weekend? 
Hi, I'm uh, Ebony Light from Exagony. Uh, you said that the zones were tiered. I was wondering if the raids are going to be locked behind keys and flags. It's <laughs> the progression of the progression of raids and such is still kind of in flux. It's 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 not an answer I can really give you yet. We 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 have to we have more work to do still. Uh, I wish I had a better answer. All right, uh, how many tears, if you know? How many? Three each. Three. Here, <laughs> we'll give it down to the guy who makes the gear. There are three tiers for group gear and two tiers for raid gear. All right. Thank you guys very much. Talking with regard to the uh, how spells are going to be reduced in power initially, uh, all casters still have to go after the spell focus sets, and they get a penalty with the new spells if they don't have the new gear yet. So have you considered that in the, the, the development there that Initially, we get a penalty when we get a new spell, and yet we still have to go get that new gear. Yes. Uh, the new spells will still be, even, even if you don't have the AA focus for those spells that have them, uh, the new spells will still be, uh, they'll still be working out to be more powerful than your old spells with your old focuses. Yeah. Uh, your new spells with your old focuses will still be an upgrade, just not as much of an upgrade as they were. All right, thank you. And I want to be—I want to make sure we're clear on this. It's not going to be all your spells are going to be under this AA focus system. We're going to be very selective so that we can hand things out carefully to make sure it's doing the effects we want, and the effects that you guys, you know, are happy with. Um, so it's going to be a con continually evolving thing. Right, and uh, it's not going to be—you know—there's not going to be an AA focus for, say, mezes. Yeah. You know, those are just going to be there. They're just what mezes. they do. The level cap stuff is is basically it. Hi, you mentioned there's going to be ports to the new zones. Will there be a clicky item as well, like in past expansions? We haven't decided on that. It's really nice to certainly have. Certainly could. Just I mean, maybe think yeah, about we it. could. We haven't, we, haven't, we haven't decided on that. We certainly, we certainly could do it. Yeah, it's convenient for a lot of people to have those. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, thanks. We know. But Wizzies like to have something to do, too, besides blow things up. Then stop asking for secondary roles. I have no question. I just want to say thanks for doing a great job. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for not giving us a role. As to the technical level of the raids in this next expansion, if Demiplane were at the top, and Kunark were on the bottom. Where do the raids fit in that spectrum for this new expansion? Like, are they really technical with lots of emotes where one person messes up, your whole raid wipes and dies, or are they basically spanking tanks? Where in that range will the raids in this expansion fit? Yeah. The, the, unfortunately, the, the guy who designed and is implementing almost all the raids is now manning the tournament. So he can't yeah. answer that question. Um, I'd say they'd be, no, knowing Alan, I'd say they'd be towards like the 75, 80% level of complexity. At the same as, as, as a guess. At the same time, we are aware that not everybody likes to have to go through the jump through the hoops, you know, sit down, spin around, pat yourself on the head kind of stuff. And so we'd like it to be a balance of those. As far as raids go, are there going to be any improvements or maybe improvements to the raid tools, like potentially? a raid banner so that when multiple guilds are raiding together, you can plant a banner and get everybody in the raid to one place, especially small guilds that don't have enough people to plant a banner? We have a gigantic laundry list of items that we would, uh, not items, of things that we would like to do uh, to improve the raid window and the entire uh, raid management process. Uh, however, uh, none of them are directly slated for this expansion, but we will get to them as soon as we can, and we will try to put in a few things um, throughout the year. Thank you. And 
things like that, things like that we wouldn't want to tie to an expansion anyway. I mean, those are improvements for everybody. Not, they shouldn't be just for one expansion. Will there be a way for you to check which uh, horses or mounts that you've collected out of all possible ones that are generally available? And uh, will there be achievements for getting more? The collection aspect of the mounts is something we've definitely discussed, and achievements are certainly a part of that. Um, it has not been actually laid out yet, but I absolutely can see that coming. Yes? So yeah, you, you can't currently see which mounts you're missing. The, the window will show you which ones you have, but it, it doesn't have like a grayed out version of the ones that you don't. Yeah, because that'd be a huge window with 128 mounts or whatever, or however many there are currently. Got kind of a general question associated with the changes to uh, the spells and the casting and the focuses with you know those guys, and I'm assuming that that is intent on balancing out maybe what you were talking about, how they kind of start out a little overpowered with those base spells and to earn that. Is there going to be any plans in the future to say the same aspect balance out those of us who have some of the lowest sustained DPS in the game, i.e. Berserkers and others who after two minutes endurance and everything's gone and we fall into druid melee mode when it comes to those, continuing that. Those are, really, those are really two different issues. The, 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 what I'm referring to in the spell focus changes are the fact that when a, an expansion launches, spellcasters get a huge power increase just from buying their rank one spells, okay? Melee have to go out and get new stuff to get any power increases. And it's just balancing out that disparity with this spell focus system right now. As to uh, class balance or what's happening with the sustain for berserkers or you know that sort of thing those are always uh, in our minds and um, it is something I've posted on the forums about as, as, a, as a target for this coming year of things that we want to work on uh, because we're aware that berserkers do crazy amounts of damage in this amount of time two minutes and then after that time is up you're kind of just standing on the sidelines going hey I'm still here um, and so we want to address that, absolutely. Um, not really a piece of this discussion, but certainly something we can talk about uh, going forward, absolutely. It's, it's, it's in our mind. Okay, thanks. Uh, these three are our last questions, uh, but don't leave. Don't, don't think leave. you can't get your, your question answered. We have a raffle, a giveaway uh, from our sponsor, Razor, yep. uh, giving away some nice equipment. So hang tight. You are all in the running for that, so here we go. Uh, since we're going back to having all the zones and tiers available at launch, is there a plan to um, kind of restrict progression so people can't just skip over tier one and go straight to tier three? But how are you gonna stagger people so everything gets, gets played? That question was already kind of asked. asked. We're, we're, we're still working on the progression aspect of it, but we do want players to experience all the content. I mean. We spend a lot of time making the content. We don't want people to just go, hey, I only get two zones for my expansion. It's, it's, we haven't worked out all the details, but it is something we have in our mind, yeah. All right. Hello, this is a Spell Focus AA question. How are hybrids affected in this? To be determined. To be determined. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just a question for everybody in the house. Um, I'm a beast lord on Emar, and I was just wondering um, where all my beast lord folks are. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right then. Shout out. Shout out to my beast lord. No. All right. <laughs> rogues. Go rogues or monks. All right. Monks. You got the uh, Doug. I got the, I got has the thing here. The gear that we are. Giving so, away from Razor, so yeah, take it thanks from there. to our buddies over at Razor, somebody in here is going to receive a Razor Death Adder mouse, a Razor Black Widow Ultimate Keyboard, and a Razor Kraken Pro headset. Now, that's 290 bucks worth of stuff, by the way. Um, underneath your chairs, somebody has a number 21 for our 21st expansion. If that's you, come up here because you win. Be careful, don't poke somebody in the eye with the chair. Don't hurt nobody. No. We have our winner. 
we, we have, have a winner. winner over here. So basically, you'll take this to the station store and they'll hook you up. You betcha. All right. Yeah. That's All a, right. I want one of those too. I don't know what the, we can't ever get those kind of deals, man. <laughs> All right. I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, hey, we're, we kick things off. We're here for three days. And uh, let's have a great time this weekend. All right? Thank you. Thanks, and guys. thank you to my team. We awesome job, here. guys. We out of here.